federal judge James Robart has put a nationwide halt to President Trump's temporary seven-nation travel ban. This halt needs to be reversed. It will be reversed, and here's why. The president's executive action last week, halting travel for 90 days for nationals from seven mostly Muslim countries, Iran, Iraq, Syria, Sudan, Somalia, and Libya and Yemen, is eminently constitutional. And it will be upheld on both legal precedent and national security grounds. Now, I start with one fundamental premise. No one, no one has the right to enter the United States unless he or she is a citizen of the United States. So, did the commander-in-chief have the authority to impose the 90-day ban? Every president has wide latitude to protect the homeland, and no one, no one has the right to usurp that presidential authority. Section 212F of the Immigration and Nationality Act of 1952, codified under Title VIII of the United States Code, Chapter 12F says yes, and every president since Jimmy Carter, and yes, including Barack Obama, has used this statute to prohibit entry of certain individuals when entry would be contrary to your national interests. Some presidents used it to a greater extent than others, but nonetheless, the actions were legal. Every president has the inherent right in his foreign affairs power, the ability to exclude people who may cause harm to you. And if that power isn't enough for you, Congress added its own imprimatur, passing a bill signed into law that a president has in his foreign affairs power the ability to do just that. And that power has never, ever been successfully challenged. Article 2, Section 2 of the Constitution gives the president the authority to protect the American people. Congress legislatively has given the president the authority to protect the American people from foreign nationals. So, this Judge Robart from Seattle issues an emergency temporary restraining order on the grounds that the plaintiffs the states of Washington and Minnesota would suffer irreparable harm and would most likely win their case. Yet there is no explanation what harm they will suffer or why they will win. On the other hand, a Boston federal judge who last week also issued an emergency stay on the same grounds of irreparable harm and the likelihood of success has declined to extend that order saying that the president did have the authority to apply extra vetting measures to travelers coming into the country from those specific countries. Now, both of these federal judges had in front of them Lady Justice and their jobs to balance the scales. On the one hand, on the one scale, the interest of foreign nationals, plaintiffs, and on the other scale, the security of the American people. Now, although the Boston judge, after further review, did not extend the order, both of them judged that the plaintiff's emergency more immediate and weighty than the security of the American people. Now, this is a kind of action that puts our country into a constitutional crisis. For a judge to say that foreign nationals' rights take priority, even though the president has determined that reviews from before are now insufficient, when that judge has virtually none of the information that the commander-in-chief has, is somewhat radical? Not surprising, given that Judge Robart is known for his community activism and controversial statements like Black Lives Matter in his federal court in 2016. Point. Last weekend, everyone who arrived was ultimately let in. But was there chaos? 
yes. But the only chaos was created by the protesters and certain members of Congress pimping for votes. And speaking of chaos, let's get a few things straight right now. You do not have the right to destroy property, public or private. You do not have the right to break windows, assault, hit or spray mace in the face of another person. All of the above are crimes. The First Amendment does not give you the right to commit a crime. But if you do, you have the right to remain silent. You have the right to an attorney. If you cannot afford one, one will be assigned to you. And you tender snowflakes out there so distressed, so depressed, so fearful of free speech that you must retreat to a safe zone with your crayons must be schizophrenic because now you're dressed like black ninjas looking to burn down buildings. You don't have the right to block traffic to stop me from catching an airplane in case I want to visit my sick mother or block him in case he's got to go for a job interview. Your rights are not superior to mine. You don't like the president? That's just too bad. Get out and vote next time. So the bottom line, every sovereign nation from the beginning of time, dating back to the Bible, has been able to determine who can and cannot enter their nation. Donald Trump has taken bold action, just like he said he would, shocking the world. Make no mistake, we do live in a dangerous world. There are legitimate national security concerns. And for some judge in Seattle to suggest that he is in a better position to evaluate the equities between some foreign nationals and the national security concerns that we have for the American people is not only egotistical, it's just plain wrong.